If anybody saw the bus that just hit me, flag him down. I need to get in touch with his insurance company. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. No, I didn't really get hit by a bus. I just woke up feeling like I did. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think it's just what's going on at work and we've been working extra hours and a lot of stress and just having a hard time getting motivated when I'm up in the morning and shit happens. That's what happens when you're an adult. At any rate, time to get started with the day. So I was just going through and looking at the comments on uh, one of my videos just using the notification bar in YouTube and this is not the first time I've seen this, but I came across a comment, or uh, there's a, a portion of the comment bar that says uh, there's comments awaiting your review. And it brings you to a page about the comments here. And it gives you your published comments, your held for review, and then your likely spam. And I ended up getting this comment here from one of my subscribers. And there's nothing wrong with the comment, but it's marked as spam. And so you've got these command buttons, approve, remove, report, spam, search comments, um, and all that jazz. So there's a checkbox here for check all, but there's no checkbox here next to the comment. Uh, and then over here, there's only two options. There's remove the comment, and then there's report spam or hide the user's comments from the channel. So there's no way for me to approve this comment right now. I tried liking the comment to see if my interaction with it and saying that I liked it would actually allow it to be published, but I'm not really sure why that happens. Um, so when people comment, whether it's on my video or other people's videos, and then their comments don't show up and they think that the this uh, creator and maybe editing or censoring comments, Sometimes I think YouTube is just miscategorizing these comments um, and I don't know why that is. There's nothing in that comment to me that would stand out. Like I know sometimes it gets that way with links and it'll flag like somebody dropping a link as spam even if it's just, you know, hey, check this you know product out, you asked about this kind of link. And a lot of times you can manually prove that but for some reason this marks as spam. Now the only other thing I can think of is Sometimes when I go to respond to comments and I use my computer to do it and the video doesn't load, it won't let me post comments until I actually let the video play a little bit because I think it's supposed to be a deterrent for you know, the trolls out there just to go from video to video and leave nasty comments. Now all of a sudden they've got to at least wait five to ten seconds to do that. But I don't like I don't know if that was it, if there wasn't enough playtime in the video, which based on the comment I would assume that there was, or if maybe the refresh button was hit. I don't really know, but obviously there's something still not quite right about the algorithm. So any of you creators out there, let me know if you've seen this before, if there's a fix for it, or if it's just kind of one of those things that, you know, you gotta deal with. It's a pain in the ass as YouTube develops. <laughs> I guess if I'm stuck doing the Richmond course, at least I've got a good workout for it. It was a one hour sprint session. Um, 
overall the ride doesn't really log as a uh, high intensity ride because there's a lot of recovery in between but you're really taxing your high end when you do these sprints so by the time I was on sprint you know nine and ten I just was not hitting the wattage that I wanted to anymore but I guess that's an indicator that I did the first seven or eight sets right but uh, I figured it was a good good segue into talking about indoor training setups or just general training setups. So this is going to be mostly for, uh, you know, cyclists or people who are getting into indoor training, whether you, you want to be a cyclist or you just want to get in shape and you're looking at the Zwift uh, setups and things like that and, and looking at how to get into it. And I kind of wanted to give uh, my two cents on the very commonly asked question, should I get a power meter? Or a smart trainer ideally if you have the money to do so or you can source out these parts used or over the course of you know a certain amount of time perhaps you would you know invest in, in your materials to train if you're looking to train seriously as a cyclist I think the answer is both um, I bought my power meter two years ago and then just this past year I bought the smart trainer uh, so we're not talking about a huge all-at-once investment and I understand that you know you're looking at spending probably on the conservative end if you're getting a, a, a power meter and a smart trainer uh, even if you looked for entry-level equipment or if you went used or refurbished if you were able to find something like that probably fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars if you're you're lucky enough to kind of source out products at that price um, you know, realistically, if you're going for something more mid-range, you're probably looking at more to two grand to twenty-five hundred dollars, and then you can pretty much uh, the the sky's the limit in terms of how much money you can spend on this type of equipment. And I guess the longer answer is more specific to what you want. Um, or what should you get first maybe is a good question if, if you're looking to aim for both in the long run But which one should you get first? my personal opinion uh, for most people uh, people who are, are going to be training uh, all year long for cycling uh, my opinion is the power meter uh, getting a decent quality power meter that you can use indoor and outdoor it's going to be um, you know consistent uh, granted everything is calibrated properly and it's installed properly and all that stuff um, you can basically take what you get indoors and out on the real road and you can make a comparison and you can really you know same bike same rider same power meter uh, you've got consistent variables inside to out so you can make a, an entire package of training around your power meter now th this is assuming that your training interests are like I said all you know all 12 months of the calendar year indoor and outdoor uh, perhaps for racing long group rides charity rides fitness weight loss whatever um, the other the other thing I guess to consider is that are you able to use all of the the apps all of the platforms and the answer is yes every single platform out there that I know of for interactive training whether it be Zwift which I've been using quite a bit to help change things up uh, trainer road you know uh, you know even Strava and training peaks they become a lot smarter and they they give you a lot more metrics and you get a lot more bang for your buck when you use a power meter even if you're using Garmin's platform or Wahoo's platform or what have you if you have power metrics fed in there it opens up a lot more information for you to kind of analyze and develop your training I am NOT a person that glues my eyes to my power meter while I'm riding unless I'm actually doing an interval set and I'm trying to achieve a certain power and more often than not that's inside on on the home trainer or it's you know maybe there's a there's an area around here that's actually kind of a just an access road if you're doing sprints just a flat you know three-quarter mile stretch of road where you can kind of look at your at your computer and, and see what you're doing but uh, you know I don't want to go off on a tangent on that but I'm, I'm able to take the power information that I'm using in Zwift or what have you and, and it feeds in all my different uh, you know social elements for cycling and all these different platforms and after the fact 
I'm able to take that data and I'm able to analyze it and I'm able to say, okay, did I reach my objective? How did I feel reaching my objective? Did I have more in me? Did I maybe overshoot? How did I compare when I did the same workout two weeks ago? Um, if you're familiar or if you've heard the term FTP testing or threshold power t testing, things like that, if, you, if you've never heard those things before, these are all based on having a power meter. Um, so it, it is, it, it gives you kind of a baseline. It helps to gauge your improvement in fitness and strength a lot more effectively than just using maybe heart rate and speed. Uh, because your heart rate, you can train it to a certain degree, uh, but once you're kind of a trained athlete, you're limited by your genetics. There's only so much you can tweak your heart rate where you're gonna see actual improvements over time. Uh, and same thing with speed. It's gonna be very contingent on terrain. Uh, you can use it as a tool on, an, on a static indoor trainer that maybe if your sp average speed is a little higher this time than it was last time or course for course with the same conditions. It helps, but it doesn't, it doesn't really give you the whole picture. So if you're looking to take your cycling seriously, I would say power meter first. And like I said before, you know, if you're looking to get into Zwift or Trainer Road, you are just as well off with a power meter in terms of um, using the platform as you are uh, with a smart trainer. Now, why would you get a smart trainer is the next question. That's more of a interactive type of environment that makes it a lot more immersive for you. Now, that being said, they do include power meters. So if you get an indoor trainer and you don't have a power meter, the indoor trainer will calculate power for you. My personal experience and opinion, being able to compare my power numbers from my power meter to a smart trainer, they're not quite as accurate, especially when you're talking about a wheel on trainer. You're kind of it's doing a calculation based on, on the resistance and, and what's coming out of your rear wheel. I don't think that they're inaccurate per se, um, but I would say there's probably about a 10 watt differential and for my particular power, we're talking about five or six percent. Um, it's significant, but it's not deal breaking, especially if you're just trying to train and get stronger. You can still compare those numbers to themselves and um, <clears throat> you'll get results but if you're trying to compare those numbers to a different power meter on the on, on the road or on a different bike or something like that you start to kind of lose a little bit in translation because the power numbers are so much different uh, I really enjoy the smart trainer it was it was a great investment for me it's definitely something that helps with impetus to ride being able to interact with Zwift especially when I'm riding by myself um, it, it gives me a little bit more, okay, I can see that hill coming up, I can see that grade coming up, I'm going to start, you know, adding power now like I would on the real road so I can carry mo my momentum up the hill and get a more accurate feel. Like, you can always tell, as a person on a smart trainer, I can always tell when somebody's not using a smart trainer because it's, it's interesting. They'll come whipping by you at the bottom of the hill and it's almost like somebody grabs them from the back of the neck and just yanks them backwards because then you just come right back around them because that power gradient, it, it's, not, it's not natural. It's just all of a sudden the gradient catch up, catches up with them and, and their speed just slacks right off in the digital world. Um, so that, that's something inherent to Zwift. Uh, when you're talking about Trainer Road, I'm not a huge uh, user of Trainer Road. I just, it's just not something I've used. I use the Cyclops virtual training app, which has workouts. Um, if you've ever heard of things like Erg Mode, I'm not a huge fan, but it is a way to kind of help you uh, modulate your power for training rides. That's where a smart trainer may come in handy, where you can kind of keep your cadence, like if you want to work on keeping your cadence at 90, it'll adjust uh, the resistance so that your 90 cadence will elicit the power um, prescribed in the workout. You know, it's definitely a great addition, but it's only for indoor riding. So if you are a person who does a lot of riding indoors, and I know a lot of triathletes do a lot of riding indoors just because of convenience especially when they're doing their bricks they're doing a swim bike brick or a bike run brick and, and just can't get outside or can't worry about having a flat so they'll do they'll, their workout inside on the trainer even on a nice day maybe smart make trainer first is the right move for you um, but I think for most people who are 
you know, cycling regularly, regularly outdoors and aren't just, you know, training for competition only, you're probably better off with power meter first. Now, this is my personal opinion. This is just something that I had a power meter first, and if I had to do it again, I would do it the exact same way. Because now that I've had a power meter for a couple of years, in the, in the very beginning, I didn't know how to use the numbers. Once I, I was able to compile a certain number of rides and do my research and see what these numbers were and compare them to one another and developed as a cyclist, now I understand what they mean. So now I pull a smart trainer into the mix and I, I understand what I'm doing with it. It almost seems to me if I had done it backwards, I may have lost some of of the, the power data and the metrics and, and being able to use that to develop as a, a cyclist in in translation. Again, my personal opinion, you gotta kind of uh, evaluate what's right for you. I mean, maybe you're just looking for some for something to have as an indoor training mechanism so that you can do this at night and it's, it's a way for weight loss and fitness and you're not really worried about riding bikes on the real road, but you want to, you know, have uh, a good training protocol indoors, something a little bit more effective than just buying a stationary bike from, you know, your local sporting goods store. The Smart Trainer is a good option. Uh, it definitely helps out. I know that, I want to say the company's Proform, they made an all-in-one like smart bike, and I know there's more and more of those on the market where it's an indoor training protocol, so you don't have to have a road bike, and it's just kind of shaped, and it's got you know the, the little mini TV built right in, and the adjustable resistance. It's great, it's, it's gimmicky, but they're expensive. You're almost better off just having your own road bike, or, or even mountain bike, that you have the option to use outdoors, and then a trainer. Um, so if you want to talk about cost, as, as more and more companies are getting into the realm of both smart trainers and power meters, the prices are going down. Uh, you know, a smart trainer, two, three years ago, you couldn't even get into the market for less than 1200 bucks. Now you can get an entry level smart trainer for five, six hundred dollars. You can say the same thing about power meters. You know, it, it used to be that, you know, SRM was basically what you were, what you were dealing with, um, or a, like a wheel-based power meter or a crank-based power meter. That was pretty much what you were limited to. And now there's more pedal-based power meters, um, more just single crank arm, arm power meters. Like, stage has completely changed the game with single crank arm power meters where you could get into that depending on what your uh, crank set was anywhere between like 400 and 800 dollars my personal opinion is if you have the money or if you're willing to wait to save the money go dual sided on uh, these single sided power meters they'll get you into it they'll you know they'll definitely be effective for you i guess they're better than no power meter but if you have the option to wait a little bit longer if it's saving up another two three hundred dollars go for something dual sided so that you know if you do have a weakness on one side or another your power numbers aren't being skewed you know if you're right leg dominant it's going to be ignored by the uh you know your left uh, your left uh, sided power meter or if your left leg dominant it's going to be overshooting your power because your right leg is weaker but it's not reading that um, and then you can train effectively to see if you can strengthen one side or the other if you have the data from both sides but if you don't want to wait or you don't have the money to get in, into that like I said a power meter can change the game regardless of how much money you're spending on it as long as it's got a good connection it's calibrated well and most of these ones on the market that people are charging money for they're within I think 2% uh, accuracy so that's pretty good and for most people I mean for you to be able to discern that 2% you're not a pro cyclist so it's really not gonna matter if you're off by that 2% because if you're consistently off by that 2% you can still use those numbers um, so to get into either one of these, whether it's power meter or um, smart trainer, you're looking at about the same upfront investment depending on which level you're going to, to get into. So entry level, um, whether it be a power meter or smart trainer, you're looking at around $500. If you're looking for, you know, mid-level, good, solid, you know, trainer, good quality, consistent, last you, you know, quite a few years, reliable, you're probably looking at about a grand. And then obviously if you're real serious or if you've got just the money to spend on it, 
you could spend you know anywhere from fifteen hundred to two grand on, on a power meter or an indoor training setup that's a smart trainer and that's going to be a personal financial decision for you or you know what you're doing in terms of prioritizing your training and what you're training for and what your goal is um, it, it, again paying for quality uh, it seems like a, a very often especially in cycling you do get what you pay for so I've got, I bought a Power Beam Pro. I wanted something wheel on because I wanted something that I could fold up because I'm really only going to use it three months out of the year or on the occasional rainy day in the summer. Um, so I wanted something I could stow away under my bed, something that was going to be out of the way and it wasn't going to be obtrusive to my, my apartment living situation. So it's a $1,000 um, smart trainer. I've got a great deal on it. I kind of talked about that before in another video. but. What I will say about it is the thing is stable. I did sprint efforts today. I never felt like the bike was going to topple over. Granted, on an indoor trainer period, even when I was on my kinetic um, rock and roll, which would have had a, like a three foot wide base that you couldn't tip over if you tried, I, I wasn't really jerking the bike. I just feel like your body doesn't feel comfortable doing that. But I didn't feel like things were tipping over. I didn't feel like, you know, one of the legs was lifting up. And what I will say about it as well is I don't get any rear wheel slip uh, on my bike. I, I it, it calibrates itself every time and it kind of readjusts to the wheel. And I haven't, knock on wood to this point, endured any rear wheel slip on like a, an uphill or on a hard effort. It's clamped right there on the wheel every single time. It's a very stable platform. The only thing that I do is I uh, periodically clean my rear wheel with just like a rubbing alcohol to get any of like the glazing off that happens when that, that tire heats up. Um, if, if with something that might be more like an entry level, so for Cyclops it's the Magnus or I think uh, Tax makes an entry level trainer. I, I can't remember the name of it. You might have more rear wheel slip. You might have a little less stability. I know for a fact with the Magnus, it's definitely less stable because I bought that first and sent it back. It, it, the platform itself just isn't as stable. But again, it's a personal financial decision. But if you have the money or if you hunt things down, or if you're looking for something used or refurbished, you, you do a little shopping, you buy from a reputable seller, you can usually get something better quality for not much more money. And, you know, these things have lifetime warranties on them, a lot of them. So, you know, you can, you can definitely depend on the quality and they, they service their items, uh, you know, pretty well. Cyclops is very good about no questions asks, asked, rather, um, you know, yeah, we'll, let's send you a part or send it in, we'll fix it for you because we stand behind the quality of our product. But I know that this gets a little bit complicated, especially if you are new, you know, to cycling or if you've been cycling for a while and you're new to, you know, adding some of these smart devices uh, to your training protocol and you, you hear more and more about it, you can't go on a single forum or, uh, you know, really look up anything about cycling without finding something about power or smart trainers. I just wanted to give my two cents, uh, you know, what I think if for your money, if you have, you know, a few, you know, seven hundred dollars burning a hole in your pocket with your tax return money or whatever, and you can't figure out if you want to do a smart trainer or a power meter. My recommendation, unless you know you fit into kind of one of those other categories that I mentioned before, is go power first. You can still use, you know, all these interactive protocols with power and not lose a ton. So go power first, it's going to be more well-rounded, it's going to be able to be something that you use all year long, it's going to be something that completely raises the game for your training. And then if down the line you've got more money or you decide that, yep, I want to raise it another level, then go to the smart trainer. So I hope that this was helpful, I know it's a little bit long-winded, um, you know, it's tough to, there's so many different people uh, and a variable audience in terms of what their familiarity is with these particular items. I, I, a lot of my viewers probably already have power or smart trainers or both and then maybe some of you have none of this stuff and it's all Swahili to you. Please you know, let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments uh, down below or if those of you who have experience have anything to add or any recommendations for other viewers out there or any tried and tested products that you would recommend for entry level that 
you, you would want to spend you know, or, uh, spread to the next uh, generation of cyclists getting into uh, the power game, definitely left it, leave it in the uh, comments down below because I think we're all here to kind of learn from one another. So I'm on my way to work and you know, I got I to gotta make the money, I got to pay the bills, I got to buy bike stuff and I appreciate all of you watching my videos. Again, comments, questions, concerns, make fun of my glasses today. Uh, let me know, comments below. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one.